Walter Grubius founded the school of Bauhaus in 1919 in a German city called Weimar, and the ideology was to mass produce beautiful designs that was functional. The school absolved in 1933 by the Nazis. Max Bell himself, who the watches are named after, studied at the Bauhaus Academy from 1927 to 1929. He was hired by Jung Heinz in 1956 and from that point helped them design the famous clock and some of their watches. Today we have an epic battle within the house of Jung Heinz. It's the 34mm Jung Heinz Max Bell versus the 38mm Jung Heinz Max Bell. There's three elements we need to cover to understand the key differences between these two watches. The first thing is the movement, the second thing is the dial, and the third thing is the size. Let's start off with some simple information about both watches. This is the Max Bell with Arabian numerals in black with a size of 34mm. It has a modified ETA 28012 movement with a power reserve of 42 hours. Interestingly enough, even though this is a premium movement from ETA, for some reason this particular model has no hacking, which is a bit odd, because I would think at this price point, it's a must. The watch is fitted with a characteristic dome plexi crystal and has a water resistance rating of 50 meters. It has the list price of $800. The Junghans 38mm with pencil indices at each hour marking creating the most simplest watch Junghans has probably ever made. The engine of the watch is a modified 28242 movement with hacking and has a power reserve of 38 hours. The Henwa movement is a modified ETA 2801 movement which is built on the 2804 design which essentially is the same as the 28242 in the Junghans automatic. So in terms of the quality of the movement you will have a similar experience with both watches. What movement type one should choose can be divided in two ways. One is the true experience of a vintage watch which utilizes hand winding and it gives you an opportunity to engage and interact with your timepiece daily. Two, other people want the aesthetics and beauty of a vintage piece but still want the convenience of an automatic timepiece. Something you put on, shake and then it just runs. The convenience is something I enjoy as well. But the hand winding creates a unique experience which I also enjoy. Favors goes in both directions. You have to make up your mind which directions fits your lifestyle the best. The second element is the dial. This can be subcategorized into dial design and dial color. If we start with the latter, black or silver white. I think the classic color choice will be the silver white as opposed to the pure black tone. But both have its appeal. I honestly did not expect to love the black dial as much as I did. And I think the black color fits very neatly into the modern minimalistic aesthetics. Both colors will have a classy and understated look. The second subcategory is whether the watch should be with Arabian normals or the cleaner pencil dial design which brands like normals and especially fashion watches have adapted. I am a bit more decisive here and definitely do gravitate more towards the Arabian normals. I love the beautiful font they've used for the numbers, it's unique and aesthetically pleasing. This specific layout design which only consists of the hours which faithfully emulates the famous kitchen clock as opposed to the max bill which also displays the seconds. Otherwise there's one other difference which is the branding of the dial. On the 38mm it says Jung Hans in automatic but on the 34mm it says Jung Hans in design. For some reason I do like the word design printed on the dial more than the movement type. The size 34mm or 38mm. If you want the true vintage experience, I think the 34mm is the best way to go. It's reminiscent of similar times and recreates a nostalgic feeling modern sizes might have a harder time capturing. I love the 34mm and I was a guy who gravitated towards smaller watches more than the bigger sizes because I felt that the bigger sizes did not capture the essence of watches but just to be a companion and not a big piece of junk that hangs out of your wrist trying to find its place in this world. With that said though, 38mm is a neoclassical size and honestly if you're not a watch enthusiast but want a watch that just fits within this modern world, I think that 38mm especially if you have an 8 inch wrist like mine will be the best watch for you. Initially the 34mm will feel out of place but you adapt to the size fairly quickly and when you do, even a 40mm watch will seem big to you. Both watches have an illusion effect because it's an all dial design which essentially means that it will seem bigger to you. So the 34mm wears more as a 35 or 36mm and the 38mm wears more as a 39 or 40mm. I just have a small commentary on Bauhaus and how it relates to these watches other than the design. Form should follow function which seems to be the importance of Bauhaus language. I used to think that the water rating was only 30mm but apparently it is 50mm and after this newfound information these watches suddenly become more attractive and become more relevant in a day filled with commuting and constant movement. The use of a mass produced quality movement would also be considered a Bauhaus choice because you want to be as sustainable as possible while also retaining the best design and technology. The 
glass design is convex or spherical on both watches and it's made of plexi crystal, which I think can be a bit controversial in today's market, especially considering the overall price to attain either one of these watches. One thing I love about plexi and acrylic crystals is the legibility compared to sapphire crystals, which smudges up fairly easily. With that said though, I still think sapphire would have been a more appropriate choice for these watches. The leather band that is fitted under 34mm is soft and thin and it molds into your wrist beautifully and I find it to be of great quality. The leather strap on the 38mm is a bit more sturdy, it takes more time to break in. They are similar in style and you will enjoy either one of them. Both these watches are unisex design and every gen out there can wear these watches as they please. It all depends on your wrist size and what you have an interest in. I just wanted to make sure everybody understood my assessment on this because a lot of watches are geared more towards men whereas Junghans is a brand that is cultivated for all genders. The cases are highly polished. They are round plates that is built with the glass on top. They are thin and elegant and has a bit of layering towards it. If you're a watch connoisseur and have plenty of watches but not a sub 36mm watch, regardless of your wrist size, I would recommend buying a 34mm watch to really understand the size discrepancy and whether that alters your perception of watches and the watch experience. I am feeling the blues lately and for some reason in these times you start to look at the simpler things, whatever that means. In this scenario, both watches will be deemed fitting for simpler times. Both these watches are timeless, vintagey, and attractive. But I think that the 34mm takes the cake for me. The slimmer profile, true vintage sizing, the numerals, the blacked out dial, it aligns for my pick at the moment. But again, it might change depending on the watch that I'm wearing. This was a bit tedious, but I hope you enjoyed my thoughts and assessment of how I came to the conclusion that the 34mm is probably the best Junghans Max build ever made. I have fairly big wrists, and I do enjoy the 38 to 40mm realm a lot. And I think I would love to add a 38mm automatic with Arabian numerals to my collection. Thank you for watching.